Dear God, where do I even start with dissecting this guy? I could talk about his plot armor, but let's be honest, there's not too much I can really add there that hasn't already been said a million times. So I suppose I'll start with something simple, his design. Picking apart that crusty outer shell before digging into the rotten core. I'm not the only one who thinks he looks like... greasy, right? And why does his combat armor have built-in coattails? And why the backpack straps? And what's with the face brace? Not only does it look stupid and impractical, it makes it so he pretty much always has the same sort of blank scowl. He's already a plank of wood, Bioware. Why would you also block any facial expressions? You can convey so much emotion and personality through expressions alone. Guess he had so little of those to show that they figured it wasn't worth even trying. He genuinely looks like a greasy mall ninja incel. So, uh, actually, I guess props to the design team for capturing his personality perfectly. And speaking of, it certainly is a personality. Pretty much every line of dialogue of his is either a smug, HA! I'm winning! Or a whiny, NO! I'm losing! Nothing he says ever adds anything. He just gloats or whines. Mass Effect 2's single mission villains are more fleshed out than this guy who's supposed to be a main antagonist. Like, there's nothing else to say here. That's his personality. He gloats and he whines. That's it. Also, he doesn't have any goals of his own. What's his motivation for trying to kill the counselor? The elusive man told him to. Why does he steal the Prothean VI? The elusive man wants it. Why does he so desperately want to kill Shepard? I don't know, he doesn't like you. We're never given any reason for him to be so committed to his cause. He's just a guy who does what he's told to. He's our enemy because of what the guy giving him orders wants. He has no stake in any of it. However, while these certainly bring him down, they're not the fundamental issue that makes Mass Effect players seethe at his mere mention. The fundamental problem with him is that he is torn between two roles that he's supposed to fill, and they clash in the worst way. The first role is that of a serious antagonist. Kai Lang is supposed to be a major threat to the player, the Darth Vader to the elusive man's Palpatine. He steals vital data out from under you on Thessia, and he leads an attack on the Citadel that will kill either the Salarian Counselor, Captain Kirihi, or Thane. Each of those is a rough loss, and one of them has to occur. He's the final boss of the second to last mission in the entire trilogy, and works as the final stand from Cerberus Against You, a group that has been around since the first game. He's supposed to be a real threat who genuinely hurts Shepard. Multiple characters treat him as a dangerous individual, with Anderson getting worried at his mention, and Miranda getting killed by him if you don't warn her that he exists. The game tries to make him into a rival for Shepard, where they're very evenly matched and skilled. And the other role he fills? A whiny joke enemy who the game makes fun of. When dying, Thane talks about how he's pathetic. The elusive man insults him if he fails to kill the counselor. He runs away because an injured Bailey and single random CSEC guy are catching up to him. In the final confrontation, Shepard actively makes fun of him, and he responds like a whiny brat. And then there's the fucking email! He sends you this snarky, rude email that genuinely reads like a copypasta. These clash horribly. His role as a super dangerous threat is undercut by his juvenile attitude and the characters actually acknowledging how foolish he is. And the way he's treated like a joke makes it infuriating when the game goes, oh no, this guy is super dangerous and proved too much for Shepard and Miranda. It inadvertently sends the message that this character is a clown and thus, as somebody he has beaten, you are less than a clown. Now, I've not read the books, but I've heard quite a few people mention that in them, Kai Lang is actually a decent character with good moments. But, and I cannot emphasize this enough, that does not matter. If a series starts as novels, then it's much more justified to have characters come in with existing relationships, and it's okay to base things on storylines that are somewhat brushed over in the game. Look at The Witcher 3. Dijkstra is a notable secondary character who just pops up out of nowhere like, Hey Geralt, we know each other. You broke my leg. And Geralt goes, Ah, yeah, that did happen. This isn't bad because the Witcher games are an adaption of the books, and having some clunky moments in what is essentially a spin-off to pay more respect to the original is justified. Mass Effect is a video game series first and foremost, 
and it is the story of Commander Shepard, who is barely even mentioned in the books. You can't bring in a character that both the player and the main protagonist have no connection to, and then expect them to be accepted as a major rival with zero setup. This is not the only time the series tells the player that you need to have looked at the spin-offs to actually know what's going on. 3 is especially guilty of this though, with stuff like Udina replacing Anderson as a counselor pushed into the Codex. Mass Effect 2 isn't free from this problem though. Guess which character in it basically just points to other mediums and says, if you want to know anything about me, go look at that instead. Yeah, you didn't think you'd get through this video without hearing about how bad Jacob was again, did ya? It's not as bad as Star Wars announcing Palpatine's return in Fortnite or anything like that, but this is still Bioware hurting the integrity of its main series to tie in the books. The game pops this character in and goes, no, he's a badass, trust us, without any in-game evidence to back it up. When you face off with him in cutscenes, he doesn't do anything impressive. They just have the player and their squadmates become totally incompetent. And if you don't know about his infamous plot armor, here's a quick summary. Cerberus thanks you for all your hard work. And when you get to the point that you fight him in-game, he is a complete and total joke. I soft-locked my game by killing him too fast. This is a fight that you have to lose. How is it supposed to feel anything other than insulting to see the protagonist lose all their brain cells so they can lose in a cutscene to a character who's one of the easiest enemies in the game? Now. I'm going to hone in on something that at first might seem very petty, but genuinely has a massive impact on the player's response to him as a character. His sword. Now people who collect swords in modern times and try to appear cool by posing with them are generally considered, well, dorks. This is because a sword cannot compete with a gun. It just can't. In Mass Effect, guns have changed quite a bit. They shoot miniature slugs shaped off of a metallic block at super speeds with all kinds of optimizations such as scopes that can slow your perception of time, heat systems that grant you infant ammo, and add-ons that make your insane technological and biotic power stronger. Guns feel like they have been worked on and improved on non-stop to get to the point they're at in Mass Effect. And Kai Lang comes at you with a fucking sword. Does this sword have any modifications that would bring it more on par with guns? If a sword is a joke against modern guns, then it would need some insane augmentation to stand up against these crazy sci-fi guns, right? It has none. It's just a plain old fucking sword. A sharp metal stick. It's not even a very well made one because you literally punch it to pieces. Mass Effect has convincingly worked in melee aspects into both the story and gameplay in plenty of circumstances. How does it do this? By having the melee aspects also receive improvements via science fiction elements. Krogan use melee believably because of their massive inherent strength. Bionics use it believably by channeling energy into their hits, and everyone else uses Omni Blades, which are disposable blades that are fabricated in an instant and then superheated. Are these all complete fiction? Yeah, absolutely, but the games do a great job handling them and making them feel believable in the world. So you have massively improved guns and massively improved melee options, but Kai Lang uses a sword that is shown to be nothing more than a piece of metal. They set up a scenario where you outnumber him and outmatch him technologically, so the only way to make it even is to have him outskill you. And the only way they know how to do that is by taking away control of Shepard and making them act like an idiot. But sometimes he randomly does outmatch you technologically when he suddenly pulls out an everything proof shield like a kid on the playground. This shield comes out of nowhere and it's not even consistent in what it looks like. The funny thing is, I don't think this bullshit shield is itself a problem. The issue is the way it's just not acknowledged or explained, 
and the fact that the game acts like he is showing skill by just throwing this thing up. This shield is very similar to the Shadow Broker's armor. The difference is that that feels satisfying to beat because it's made clear how it works and you exploit its established weakness by entering close combat range and doing an over-the-top badass fistfight. And this is another example of how Bioware made melee feel natural and like a reasonable course of action. Now, many people have talked about fixing Kai Lang. Something I've heard plenty of times by you lovely commenters is to combine him with Jacob Taylor, which is actually a great idea. It's rare that combining two awful characters would make something good, but in the case of Jacob Lang, it would work great. Jacob would be much less boring, and the things that make him so easy to hate would work great on a villain. And it would fix the way Lang just randomly appears and is suddenly supposed to be a rival. It would genuinely turn these two awful characters into one interesting one. But let's say we want to fix Kai Lang with as few changes as possible. How can we fundamentally fix him without fundamentally changing him? The answer is to lean on that bullshit everything proof shield. In Mass Effect 3, Cerberus is making heavy use of Reaper technology. Technology that is consistently stated to completely outclass the tech of every race. Technology that cannot be recreated because a major component is material from living creatures. Technology that cannot be repurposed because its very presence slowly corrupts your mind and makes you serve the Reapers. Cerberus knows this, and despite their absolute best efforts to avoid the corruption, they are turned into puppets of the Reapers due to their use of this tech. The precedent for them outclassing Shepard technologically is already there, and that arc has its resolution already in the game. Just tie Kai Lang into there. Make it so Kai Lang has an improved but fundamentally identical variant of the Shadow Broker armor. This means it's tech that is already established, but also a new threat due to its improvements. Next, ditch the shitty Mail Order Ninjato and give Kai Lang a specialized Omniblade, something that outpaces what Shepard has, meaning getting into close range with Kai Lang, something necessary to bypass this type of armor, is suicide. Suddenly, instead of Shepard being an idiot unable to deal with Kai Lang, they're simply caught off guard by technology they lack a proper counter to. By doing this, you can keep pretty much everything else identical, but it's so much better. Now instead of Thane looking like an idiot for rushing towards a guy with a sword while he holds a gun, he has to get in close, but he loses. Now instead of Miranda arbitrarily dying to him because she wasn't ready, she dies because she lacked a proper countermeasure to his technology. Now there would be actual growth between the fight on Thessia and the final encounter on Chrono Station. Instead of an arbitrary cutscene loss on Thessia, and then winning on Chrono Station because the game finally lets you, you lack the countermeasure on Thessia, and by the time you face him on Kronos, you've learned how to beat him. This also fixes the clash I mentioned earlier. As it stands, Kai Lang being presented as pathetic and as a threat are at odds, because it's supposed to be his skills that make him a threat. If it's now explicitly his technology that makes him a threat, these are no longer contradictory aspects. If he's carried by advanced tech, he can both be a sad, pathetic man, not capable of much, and a genuine threat. He's not really a good character with these changes, sure, but by simply replacing his bullshit plot armor with actual canon explainable armor, you have fixed the problems that make him so infuriating. People tend to look at stories they don't like and say, oh, I could have written a better story than that. It's so easy. And generally speaking, that isn't true. Writing a story is hard work, and many people who think they could outdo professional writers vastly underestimate just how much they would actually need to consider. They might be able to make something that they themselves would like more, sure, but that doesn't mean they could make something that is considered better than what is official. There's a reason that fanfiction generally doesn't have a great reputation. But with Kai Lang, various people on the internet could have genuinely done it better. Go to the comments and tell me how you would have changed Kai Lang to make it better, even if your answer is as simple as remove him. I guarantee you it will be hard for me to find anything in the comments that is actually worse than what exists in the game. It's sad too, because if Kai Lang was done well, he would have been a highlight! Troy Baker voices him and is so clearly giving it his all, even with the garbage dialogue given to him. The points in the story where he shows up are a genuinely good place for our rival to fit in. Bringing in a major antagonist from the books could have been super satisfying for those that read them. And the part where you kill him is immensely satisfying as is. That was for Thane, you son of a bitch!
You could have had a great plot line here, Bioware. The ingredients were there, but I don't think it could have done it any worse if you were actively trying to. Anyways, thanks for watching, folks. I've got to head to the shop and grab more cereal. Somebody ate all mine.